Another day and another camera directly aiming at the balls of the presumer DSLR. Mirrorless is trying to kill off DSLRs and here's Fuji's potential nail in the coffin. Bing bong, let's go. Exciting times, we've got new Fujifilm X-H1. So what is new? Well, it's got the same battery. Um, it's got the same megapixel, same sensor in fact, same burst rate and it's bigger. I mean, just how did they manage that? It's a, it's a miracle that they made it bigger and put all the same stuff in it. Only joking, it has got new stuff. So what has it got? Let's go out in the rain. What a lovely day for shooting photos. So also the same is this, also the same is this screen, tilty flippy screen, although this is now a touch screen, but it's still got this. Check this out. Do you, do you want to look at, do you want, do you want to look at my shot? There you go. Have a look at that, Amazing. Tim. That's great. Nah, it's, it's actually meant for that, but um, anyway, let's take a shot. Yeah, what is new? Apart from the nice touchy-feely screen, we have a nice, not bigger, but big nonetheless bright 3.69 million dot looky see thing. And although it still has 24 megapixels of the X-T2, it deals with shaky stuff better. It's got image stabilization. This is something that Fuji said was impossible. Basically, they lied. I mean, 2018 is, is becoming quite a year, isn't it? Fujifilm are doing the impossible, Canon are treating 4K not as a dirty word anymore. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm saying this, it's Canon that shoots 4K. Whatever next, Pentax will stop making ugly cameras. Maybe Nikon will actually make a good mirrorless camera. Okay, okay, let's not get too crazy. Anyway, in-body stabilization, 5.5 stops of extra nun shakiness, not too shabby. Gotta have this shot. Love the symmetry there. Do you like, do you like my beard, by the way? Let's bump up the dynamic range. Always love the Fujifilm colors. I tell ya, DR 400%. What have we got? Classic chrome. Ooh, yes. Next upgrade is like music to the ears. Hang on. That is, that's quiet. Not that you can actually hear it. It's not even working. It has got a new quieter shutter, but. Are you sure the shutter is? That is actually, that is actually making a noise. Okay. Listen, listen to that, or rather not, don't listen to that because you can't hear anything. Check no. that shit out. That's amazing. This is a this is the ultimate pervs camera. Not that I'm being pervy. Anybody who's listening, I am taking perfectly non pervy, non upskirty shots. Oi, where's the screen? Let's have some little ripples. I said ripples, non pervy. Remember, so you can change you can change the focus by using the touch screen. Oh, and it's also worth noting that the weather ceiling is, well, more sealed than the X-T2, thankfully. Sorry, Tim, I know you're getting wet. I'm getting wet too. We'll enjoy the misery together. Not only do the images look good, X-H1 feels right in the hands. Bulkier is mostly a good thing. Even without the grip, it feels just right. Like an odd-shaped magnesium alloy burger. Mmm. And it's kind of refreshing to have a mirrorless cam with more grip. It feels like you're using an actual proper pro camera, which this kind of is. Whoops. Sorry. God, love those reflections. What else has got Bluetooth? Wow. Great. Instead of white teeth. It's got avatar teeth. Shit, it's wet. That's generally what rain feels like. Let's get in the, let's get in the shade. Cover, not shade. It's not sunny. What I love about Fuji X cameras, the classic aperture, shutter speed, and ISO dials. Quick to check your settings on the top plate, which has been beefed up with this. And also this, this is seriously cool. I, I don't know what you call this kind of screen. It's like a film negative. Yeah, like it's ink, I, like think, ink. I think that's what they call it. Yeah. Ink screen. If not, we'll just edit that out and put it's it on the like screen. It's like seeing on Kindle. Yes, yes, it's like, it's like a Kindle. Kindle on, on your camera, you can read. It's a very boring book. <laughs> Bulb, F5.6. That's pretty good, good for information there. It's just like the screen seen on the top of the bastardly big sensor GFX. In terms of legibility, it's quite hard to beat. Yeah, so apart from that, in terms of stills, it's very samey, but the big improvement is the video feature. 
that top LCD makes sense now that additional info is useful for the added video goodness. So this shoots 4K, but this shoots DCI as well. It's also got 23.98 FPS, 24, 200 megabits per second. Plus you've got this new film simulation, which is flat. You've got F-Log, internal F-Log, unlike X-T2, which was only for external recorder. There you go, F-Log recording on. It's on. You can switch that off and I can show you the Chroma. Chroma? Not Chroma, Eterna. Eterna Cinema is the new film simulation. It's flatter. Apparently more details in the shadows. Ah. Oh yeah, and the shutter speeds. So even on the dial, you've got like the classic retro cramp cameras. You've got 60 of a second, 30 of a second, but you can choose 48 of a second if you're shooting 24p or 23.98. So you can get exactly 180 degree shutter. Actually, that's one thing. Actually, one thing you can't see on the screen, whether it's DCI or, or UHD, no. is only when you click into the menu that it says 17 by nine or 16 by nine. Let's try out the um, continuous autofocus. I mean, in terms of the autofocus points, it's, it's the same as the XT2, but it's improved in terms of low light, sensitive to minus one EV. And you've got the eye face detection now, face AF. I quite like the look of that. That's pretty good, yeah. One thing when you've got on ISO auto is that it's not smooth, it kind of, it's like, it's like stepped like that. But your autofocus is pretty good. Panasonic, are you listening? Fuji should be taken seriously for video because the footage is seriously good. A solid amount of dynamic range, no details in the highlights and shadows. In the Turner, the colour is pretty much baked in there. Minor tweaking of colour wheels and saturation gets it looking like this. Oh, it looks good though. Looks oh look, time code. Oh damn. It is a proper, proper video geeks, but yet at the same time, it's not 10 bit. It's not like the GH5. They could have gone all the way and gone for 10 bit, but this is still 8 bit video. Oh, I'm hungry. Are you hungry, Tim? Yeah, I'm hungry. Let's go get some food. Sorry, it was all that talk of burgers. Anyway, over lunch, I noticed something. Apart from the lunch getting cold, the continuous autofocus performance seemed to have gone cold too. Yeah, a bit slow there. Yeah, a bit slow to focus there. There were times it just didn't focus on the obvious, with face detection on also. It was almost as if the focus had just stopped working out for lunch. I don't know if it's because of the light, it's kind of low light, low contrast at the minute. Sometimes it works really good. When it works, it's reliable. When it doesn't, you know what? I think it just doesn't like Tim's face. Oh, and this isn't a rolling shutter test, by the way. I was just waving the camera about in frustration. It is disappointing. Panasonic, you can stop listening now, but I guess at least it's still a beast for stills. But the burst rate is quite insane on this. Let me show you. I have to switch on first. <laughs> ah, we've got it in beast mode now. Beast mode. It's like a little mouse. And that's the mechanical shutter. You can choose, you can choose different shutters here. Shutter type, mechanical shutter. Electronic shutter, electronic front cut. I'm a, I think I swore that I said electronic cut. Electronic front curtain shutter. <laughs> <laughs> electronic cut. That's a totally different thing. You get 14 FPS with electronic shutter, but that's electronic. You can get the optional battery grip to up the burst rate of the mechanical shutter. But that's even before we get to the boost mode. <gasps> we should be doing something boosty, right? Boosted! <clears throat> yeah. With the boost, we're talking about 11 FPS, not 8 FPS, 11 with mechanical shutter and add to that the 325 autofocus points to improve the autofocus and this makes sense as an action camera but there's only one way to test that out let's go for the fast subject we have alfie green he's not moving much now but his limbs are flexible look he's a free runner which means he's good at running freely and doing slightly dangerous jumps too i mean just looking down it makes my ball show up into a, a vagina Let's test the tracking out, see how well it'll keep focus. And I can tell you this now, the focus is like crap, in a good way. It's like crap on the side of a toilet bowl, super sticky. It sticks onto your subject like glue. I like the focus on the X-T2 and the X-H1 doesn't disappoint with the speed and accuracy. It is quite a phenomenal camera. <laughs> Thank you.
which makes it somewhat of a shame that that speed and accuracy can't be consistently transitioned into the movie mode. Still, silver lining, you can get more stable handheld shots now with the IBIS. So yes, it does have five axis stabilization. It's pretty good actually, it's quite nice and smooth, but obviously for action like this, you're still gonna have to use a gimbal. The IBIS works well for handheld shots, but of course no IBIS on any camera will help running shots. I like it a lot for video. It does 1080, 120 or 100, and there is aliasing in this mode, but you know what? I love the look of the log files from it. This really is quite an excellent camera for video. Actually, no, make that almost excellent. It doesn't have zebra, it doesn't have waveforms, which is a bit of a problem when you're shooting video and you want to get the right exposure. So that's a bit of a downer, really. Like other Fujis, it's a belter of a camera to use, and like the other X cameras, it also has some slight annoyances. I figured out why I couldn't see the screen earlier. Ha! Ah! See, just, I don't know if you can see it, there's a tiny speck of water droplet just on the sensor there. I can't see it. There's a, it's just one tiny drop of water on the sensor, and that's stopping the screen from coming on. So sensitive. Look at that, look at that. That's, that's surely not right, is it? It's like a virgin. Let's have a slightly slower shutter speed. 15 for a second. The in-body stabilization alone is worth spending a little bit more for than the X-T2, which doesn't have it. It is damn useful, not just for stills, but also for video. It sort of doesn't matter that it's not 10-bit video, and I don't care, well, a little, that it doesn't have 4K 60. What bothered me is that the continuous autofocus didn't work well all the time, and some features don't work that well at all. Movie silent control, on. So instead of using the dials, you've got all of the settings adjusted in the menu here. So you can just use touch screen instead of using the dials and the buttons so you don't make any noises. However, when you adjust the shutter speed, it takes freaking ages. Just look at that, it's really slow. That's not very responsive. The movie silent control is silent, but the control is fiddly. That doesn't matter though, because the videos look great, despite the 1.17 times crop on top of the APS-C crop. Even when you just fiddle with the sliders, no LUTs, files look great, as do the stills. It's the kind of camera that you will forgive for some slight shortcomings, but it's not as simple as that. For the price of the battery grip and the body, that is Sony A7 III territory. So that is a tough choice to make, where you go for just APS-C, or you go full frame. It's $1,900 for the X-H1 body only, $2,000 for the Sony a 7 III body only. If you buy the $330 grip for the Fuji, it's a bit more expensive than the Sony. By implementing a solid video feature, an in-body IS, Fuji has played catch-up. But would it be too hard to resist the temptation to chase? the full-frame dream.